Stay inside, it's got nowhere to go. Profiteer in front, a half on home affairs. Animo starting to lengthen in the middle. It's Profiteer and Animo the outside. Profiteer, Animo, Animo went home best. Welcome to Vet Doctor, a behind the curtain look at how pro punters operate. Powered by punningform.com.au and the biggest betting bookmaker, topsport.com.au. I'm your host, Scoot, and I'm joined by the punters, punner DK. Hi, Scooty. Yes. And Darcy Dars. Sphinx, who's hey maybe a little bit hungover today. She had a, a Wednesday wedding Wednesday at morning. Wedding. What's doing there? I know, I know, a Wednesday wedding. I didn't touch a sip of alcohol. Wow. Oh, yeah, yes. I was the designated driver for the night. It was good, but I mean, Wednesday. It was a struggle, to yeah. say the least. Yeah. I am a little bit tired. <laughs> missed, missed maps too. That's a, probably know. even more. Eh? What Wednesday happened? Was, yeah, and I missed it too, oh, DK. Mad, madness, chaos. Oh, chaos. Yeah. Oh, mate, the pun- it would have been punch-ons if they were allowed to. But, yeah. Um, no, a couple of uh, Sam and Bryce absolutely went nuts at each other. Coco and whatever's going on, they're swapping partners. Oh, mate, it was all on, oh. on for young and old last night. But <laughs> anyway, looking forward to the week. It's on Sunday night again. And I see uh, our Sydney analyst, uh, Johnny Walter, he's even tuned he's in. He's tuned in, he's in right? tweet, the, so... the, the missus must have dragged him yeah, in exactly, on the big exactly. holding hands last night. So. <laughs> a lot yeah. of punters are getting dragged under the mass bus, that's for sure. And a little bit of viewer feedback. We've had someone ask for a market at topsport.com.au. I'm not sure if Tristan will frame it. It sounds a little bit obscure, but when will Prince Harry and Meghan split up? But I don't know about you guys. I watched the Oprah thing, and I think it was probably one of the most watched episodes of of TV going around. But what I saw from Harry and Meghan, I don't think they're going to split up at all. I think that if I had to set a line on under or over how long their marriage would last, it'd be minimum 15 years. So, and, And maybe not at all. Like, she's got him hook, line, and sinker and buy yeah. the short and curlies. What do you reckon, DK? Yeah, no, spot on. Yeah, yeah I'm 13 years, Scooty, and how I got to... If I can get to 13, <laughs> I, yeah. I, you, can get to, you can get to 15. I think so. they, they seem like quite a strong team. The fact mm. that they sat there and they did that interview together says a lot about their marriage. I think he's definitely... Um, what's it called? Whipped? Yeah. <laughs> PU double five whipped. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, I think so. uh, I think yeah, they're, they're going to go it for the long haul. But uh, how was your weekend on the punt, Darcy? You have a bet? No, I actually stayed okay. away from it this weekend. So I'm interested to hear how you guys went. Uh, I was on the roller coaster on Saturday. Uh, I was winning early, um, then started to get some a couple of sick beats. I was on stay inside. Um, I was on Moanga. Moanga, yeah, yeah. But there was a little sorry. thing called uh, Raminda Run. That Fletcher tipped at Singapore. It was twelve dollars into ten dollars, and it was a nice oh, each way yeah. play. So yeah, it was uh, it was a my sort of saviour. And then I absolutely did my ass at Hong Kong. I I had bullets, and I just fired as much as I could at uh, the meeting at Sha Tin last Sunday, and I come off second best. But um, mm. you know, it's just oh. the roller coaster. Saturday was a good day, and then Sunday no good. But uh, and what about you, DK? How was your weekend? A uh, week on the punt. Week last week was good. Um, had a couple of winners there, mm. but um, just it just got a bit slow for me. Um, I thought Saturday I'd have a few, you know, it's a few venues, but I had sort of quality control issues there. The problem with going out wide is you do get a lesser quality of animal, mm. and I'm, I want to back nice horses, so um, yeah. So unfortunately there wasn't anything there. Sunday there was short favourites, so I think I said to you, Scoot, there was short favourites in the Maidens at Stony Creek and Achuca, and I didn't really want to be on them or against them, and a couple of them won by a pimple from things like as dangers. Mm. Um, Monday there was a race to bid in at Warnable until there was a sprinkler malfunction and the distance got oh. changed oh, yeah, and the track I saw got that. wet. Oh no! And then um, and on Tuesday there was um, there was only one race to bid in as well and we had a sort of bet of six dollars, um, but there was three other races with full of first starters and things like that. So it's been a bit quiet, but um, you know I'm sort of taking you know if I'm betting, I want the people the, the Followers to bet, you know. I, yep. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to back it. I don't want to tip yeah. it. So, um, and that's sort of the way I go. So we're sort of picking the eyes out of it a bit. Mm. Um, so we we'll found it. There's there's a nice one in tonight. We'll we'll, uh, we'll send that out later on. And um, there's a couple of the tomorrow at Hamilton. There's some nice horses in. So I just I just need nice horses. And if you can see by yeah, we've got, we've got the graphic on the screen now, and you, you've started off with a bit of a bang here. You've gone three from six winners, and then you've had a, a second and a fourth. And, and a third, second, third, th- Yeah, second, third, and a fourth. So you're all over the money. I think you've, you've put out uh, six units for eight and a half back at about 41%, and then you've had 
Ballarat, you've had Princess Rahini's 360 into 250, Werribee Nordic Pride 320 into 290, and then Stall Real Sensation $1.70 into $1.35, and it it won like far lap. But a couple of those horses have done it the real tough tough way too. So they've sat out, you know, outside the speed, probably not really um, real sensation, but they've had to make long searching runs the first couple of winners. So yeah. you're finding horses that are ready to absolutely explode, and that's sort of what I like about the set. And if we um, we'll just get the replay up now of I guess the last winner that you've backed was Real Sensation, which is the dollar seventy into a dollar thirty five shot, and we'll just watch it sort of charge to the line, and it's sort of. Well, I I had to go for a walk here because I mean it's never easy. Where is I mean, it? This DK? is this is in the green, and green and white just getting to the middle now. It only got clear a hundred yards before that, mm. and it just lets rip here under you know. But oh, yeah. it, it was dollar thirty chance, and Billy ended up three back on the rails. I had to go for a walk. I had to do a lap of the lounge room. <laughs> I didn't want to watch it from the. Thousand meters to the six hundred because I just knew it was going to be oh no 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 but mm. lucky it was just, just it had a, had links on him had a hundred yards on him yeah. yeah yeah which is what I said and that's why look I'm not big on I'm not that's on me I'll, but if they I mean that's a big over mm. you're getting a dollar seventy dollar eighty the dollar thirty chance yeah people's own you know it's it's a huge it's bigger bigger over than twenties into fives yeah exactly you know so um and it's so yeah and it's it's you know I only need one or two of those a week and that's my week you know yeah it's, um so that's what I'm sort of focusing in on. Um, he's in on Saturday, that horse, and he's got a real good chance on in the um, three-year-old Vopus race at Mooney at Valley. Mooney Valley. It's just a real nice horse, you mm. know. And there's been a little bit of early support for it. Uh, yeah, by oh, the he's a nice horse, and he's got because he's, he's got plenty in the tank. That, that was just a 400 metre squeeze for him. Yeah, you know, he's, he's going there with a, as a coiled spring, I would have thought. So, um, yeah, so look out for him. Good to see you up and about for your first week for subscribers. Looking at today's show. We're going to go unchanged. We thought the guys were really sharp last week. We've got Beat the Bagman, Shane Adair. He's going to cover off a couple of early races in Adelaide to get the ball rolling there. He was okay in the Adelaide Cup. He sort of declared the favourite, which a lot of people found, was Charlie Rose. I didn't think it quite settled during the run. Some people said that it didn't get quite get the trip, but was on the chewy most of the race and over 3,200 metres. That's, I don't like to see my horses with their head carriage and that sort of keen going at all. But he did found, uh, find the place getter there. I think the third place getter was like 320 into into $1.70. So I think you could salvage something there if you played both of his selections. We've got Casey McCutcheon, Mint Bet. So Shane Adair and Mint Bet are going head-to-head -head next week at the Money Valley Nights at the Mooney Valley Race Night. Casey's going to talk All-Star Mile, and I think he's found one earlier in the card. And then Johnny Walter. He's going to give us an update on the Slipper Pitcher and the Rose Hill Guineas. He's going to dissect that and see which horses are the best ones to follow there. And he's had a look at the Magic Knight stakes there for Philly. So Walt is coming back. But uh, if you're doing the, the form at home, Das, who are you using? Huntingform.com.au, Australia's best online form guide and database. You can also get raw data to build your own model. Contact Pontingform to find out more. Up next, we're going to talk Adelaide with Beat the Bagman. Welcome back to Bet Doctor, a behind the curtain look at how pro punters operate. I'm your host, Scoot. I've got DK, the punters punter, and Darcy Spinks. And we're going to talk all things Adelaide. It was a massive, massive weekend for Adelaide racing. They had the Adelaide Cup and Charlie Rose, the hot pot, got turned over in a sensational edition of the race. And it just seems like that race is growing in stature well, year by year. And another man who's growing in stature year by year is Beat the Bagman, Shane Adair. Welcome to the show, Shane. Thank you, Scoot. That's a very nice introduction, mate. Good morning, all the uh, other doctors. I hope um, everyone had a great weekend on the punt. It certainly was a huge weekend of racing in South Australia with... The uh, Ruffy, good idea for the Philip Stokeshire saluting in the big one. Yeah, it was a really interesting race. Obviously, I was sort of chips in, and I, I played a really fancy like parlay and multi with uh, some of Clarkin's runners, and then had everything sort of like launched into Charlie Rose, thinking it was a good thing in the day. So I had Ironclad and all these horses sort of running in combos, and I come off second best. What did you think of the run of Charlie Rose? Oh, look, on face value, it was poor. Really, um, I think had every chance. Jason Holder got into a nice position. Um, look, I, I don't think it settled 100% in the run. It probably didn't get the trip. But um, look, I think they'll put it away and probably aim it up again in the, the Melbourne Cup. But um, it would uh, probably want to improve sharply to uh, warrant a start in the race from what we saw on Monday. But um, as you said about the Clark and runners, ironclad on uh, Monday was a really, really good victory and looks a horse on the way up. Mm, they're probably just starting to wrap up the party there. 
If yes. I had a horse like that, just the way it won was it was just a barnstorming win. It was sort of got knocked down a couple of times and it just emerged it's and just a good horse, it? yeah, won with a, a leg in the air. So it's going to be absolutely Some deadly. Good fellas in the ownership too. So um, yeah. good luck to them. Hope it hope it wins more good races that horse. Ex- exactly. I think uh, a lot of fun in store. That's exactly what you want to see from a horse. Now, Shane. Uh, on to Morfittville this Saturday. We're going to have a look at race three in Adelaide. It's a thousand metre handicap. Uh, we're going to go to the market first, Das. Let's uh, have a quick look at the market there. Yes, yeah, so no real change early. Bo Rossa is favourite, $2.80 from Chosen Blonde at $3. Cool. And Shane, you've uh, you've found the favourite here, Bo Rossa. We're just going to get the replay up on screen now and you can talk us through... It's uh, it's last win. Yeah, well, you mentioned the um, Clark and Stable just before with their ironclad on the Adelaide Cup day, and I think they've got another nice one here with Bo Rossa. This uh, replays back from Melbourne Cup day last year, and he broke through his maiden status. Um, look, the other runs prior to this, he was knocking on the door of victory today. On this day, he came and uh, put him away to win very convincingly. The next start, they actually took it to Ballarat at listed level, and although failing was well in the betting and uh, I think with Todd Panel in the saddle, I think they go about uh, 20% ROI for the last 12 months. So he's his go-to man and there's already been early money for it since markets opened up. I think it was as much as $3.30 plus. Mm. So I'm expecting it to be right in the finish. That's race three, number three, Bo Rossa. Mm. And it looks like a, a horse that you'd find, DK, puts itself up on the speed. And do you I like the way it sort of... It, raced away there is it usually a go forward horse yes it's not uh traditionally a go forward horse this start of melbourne cup day i think was more the class that sort of pulled itself up to the front i think with the pace in the race it was just settled just behind the speed and as always on the park circuit you don't really want to get too far back but i think it can just camp itself behind the leaders and uh, be right in the finish and then uh, you're gonna chime into race four uh shortly after that and ask can we have a look at the market there yep favorite one casino 17 two dollars 25 to do two two dollars 20 but no big market movers and chain you sort of you like the favorite here as well casino 17 and we're going to get the replay of its last start up on screen now yeah casino 17 this day was at balaclava it was only a benchmark 54 so uh it's obviously gonna have to step up a little bit from this effort today but um, there's just no speed in the race. It will cross from the outside draw, take up the front, and uh, will run out strongly the 1,400 metres. I think it looks extremely hard to beat. Last star, um, last preparation, sorry, it did run at listed level behind Ain't No Done Deal, although oh, yeah. beaten a long way. So the stable obviously has a uh, opinion of it. As you can see on the replay here, Balaclava, it wins by absolute panels. It'll go to the front. I think it'll be very hard to beat. And uh, those leaders on the park circuit, as I said before, uh, are hard to run down. Important with that horse too. I mean, it's not, I knew that horse from when it was over here. It's first couple of starts. And I think didn't it go to border town and get beat at short odds or narrow court or something. But then they gelded it. So it's just, again, it's a big, big change. I think big it's a gear change. big gear change. Um, yeah, it's concentrating on racing. It's seems to be the uh, ultimate gear change. The ultimate gear change. Mm. The ultimate, yeah. Didn't so there's, we, talk about, we, we talk about blinkers. Um, and gear gelding is another big one. Um, so that horse, they can improve lengths, which that horse has. What do you think about the price? Two twenty. Sure, is that horse going you... absolutely fantastic. Two twenty. Um, look, I think it's definitely short enough at the current quote. I think it will drift probably from that price. I think around that two dollars fifty mark, we can um, launch and uh, we'll be getting the cash. And then Bo Rossa, the price. Would you take two eighty now? Do you think it's going to keep short, shortening up, or bookies might risk it? I think it will. I think it'll be around the 250 time by the time jump rolls around. Um, as I said, it was much as three dollars thirty plus uh, when markets went up. So uh, I think they've got a few smarties tied to the clock and yard. So um, maybe they stepped in early and they've snaffled the early price. So um, it's a good sign for us. And we're just over a week away from uh, the Group One William Reed Stakes Night, and you and John Kelton. Uh, Eagle Punt will be joining us for the live stream against Mint Bet Casey McCutcheon. How are you feeling? I guess the early banks, there's a few thousand dollars in each pool. I think Vicks have got a little bit more early support. Um, I expect uh, Kelton's band of many owners and supporters and 
I think he'll be tipping in as much as he can himself. But uh, what what are you doing in preparation for the for the big night? Preparation, probably uh, yeah, lots of drinking, um, lots of late nights, <laughs> um, really putting in the hard yards for this week. Um, no, no, I think I've uh, in extremely good hands. I think people should be investing in the uh, SA punters group. Um, as I've said before, John Kelton is a, a very astute judge, a very smart operator, and um, if he isn't winning, no one will be winning on Friday night. Mm, and it'll be hard to beat. Yeah, to I'd, be. I'd probably lean. Uh, I think it's a pretty fair matchup. I think Casey has got a slight edge. He's being got the black shorts, the black yeah, shorts. like, like Mooney Valley. It's his, it's one of his favourite decks, and he has signalled that Group One William Reed night as a, a night that he uh, uh, like often loves. So I think there's a slight edge playing on the home deck, but um, yeah, John Kelton does do Melbourne form, and he buys and sells lots of horses, so he knows form inside out. So he's all he, he's got a really good handle on where horses sit in sort of a class um, rung, and he can put that mm. form into in, convert that into bets. So I think it's a really fair contest, and I think you know when the pressure uh, starts to build late, I think this one may go down to the, like the final couple of races, and whoever manages the bank best. I think they're going to find a lot of the same horses, but uh, again, race to race, they've got different betting banks and they can choose how they like to spend it. So I think the guys might be a little bit cagey early and then uh, the last couple of races, they're going to have to pull a rabbit out of the hat to, to get a, a clear lead. But the game the game tactics here and the game theory around this has got me fascinated with the contest. And, 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 and nothing surer than the boys, you know, the big, oh. hit, the big hit in the Blue Diamond, Animo. Yeah. Couldn't get there for them. What's it do on Saturday? Yeah. Charges when, to the line. In the know, Todman. In the Todman. You know, it's, just, <laughs> it's just, yeah, so the big, rate, the big race, everyone will be interesting to see what they do in the William Reed. Mm, but um, whatever gets beat, be on it next start. With the boys back at dipping it. Yeah, I, I opened the window last Saturday and I think I could hear the noon and screaming from morning to now. I was so disappointed <laughs> sure. that, uh, that sure. anime, no it just, just bobs up. And I noticed a couple of the little birdie supporters uh, that chimed into the 8 and $9. But yeah, mm. Murphy's Law, it uh, it's going to be a cracking, cracking night. And I think uh, the SA boys have got a couple of funny costumes lined up. So a little bit of pressure. Oh, on, look out. Yeah, a little bit of pressure on, on the Mint Bet team. So if you haven't got a ticket yet, uh, this will be a front row seat that you'll need, but if you live interstate or you're um, sort of COVID locked down, you can also catch the stream. So head to at uh, Little Birdie TV on Twitter to find more details, or at or sorry www.littlebirdiepod.com, and you can secure, secure your tickets. I think it's 150 bucks per person. It's a two course meal and uh, food and drink and everything, race book, entry in. So we'll all be there in the room. Darcy will be there with us. Yeah. And it's going to be a great event at the Valley in the Valley View room. You can get up out of your seat and you can go for a walk down on, oh, on onto the balcony so on to, level two. So close to the action. Yeah, there, huh? and it's going to be great stuff. And we're going to go through all the races in, in great depth. So if you've got a question or want to learn how to bet, this is the event for you. And if not, tune into our YouTube channel, Little Birdie Podcast, to we'll get that action there. That night, Scooty. You I'll will be up and about. Crowd. Yeah, DK <laughs> will put him on the roving mic and Darcy on the roving mic too. Yep. So there'll be <laughs> lots of engagement there and you can fire in all your questions to Bagman and Kelton from the SA team and there'll be lots of sledging as well. I'd be surprised if uh, Casey and his team don't give these uh, SA guys an absolute earful. And I noticed that uh, Shane Adair has been tweeting Kikovic on his Twitter handle as well. So it's going to be gloves off for Mooney Valley Group 1 William Reed Stakes Night. It's a night not to be missed. Thanks for joining us, Shane. So your best bets are Race 3 Adelaide Bo Rossa and Race 4 Casino 17. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in Victoria next week. See you, mate. Cannot see wait. Ya. Okay. Topsport.com.au are the bookmaker that is taking all our bets on Group 1 William Reed Stakes Night. And it does... Top, they are. Oh, yes. Topsport.com.au. Family owned and run for 30 years. Bet with a bookmaker you can trust and please gamble responsibly. 1 800 858 858. Up next, we're going to talk Mooney Valley All Star Mile Day with Casey McCutcheon. Welcome back to Bet Doctor, a behind the curtain look at how pro punters operate. I'm your host, Scoot, with DK and Darcy Spinks. And we've got the bookie basher from Bo Morris joining us. We've got Casey McCutcheon. We've got Mint Bet. Life's minty with Casey. How are you, Casey? G'day, gang. It's uh, wonderful to be talking to you. G'day, DK, Das. Uh, head of this big feature race we got on Saturday. It's the, now the number one race of the autumn. I don't know if you've heard, but uh, don't worry about the new market in the Australia Cup. It's the All Star Mile. And it's a good contest here at the Valley on Saturday. Now, you've been fielding on the lawn the last couple of meetings. and 
it's been bookie paradise. It feels like it's been a bookie's paradise for the entire year so far, but there's just favourites dropping like flies. Oh, wow. How was last uh, Super Saturday Super Bloodbath? I reckon there would be punters out there having 13-leg favourite multis that didn't jag a single victory. There was uh, there was Anavista, Odium, Cooled, Oxley Road, Seppi, Ludicorn, 50 Stars, Personal, Profiteer, Nature Super, you can, the list goes on. But how resilient are the punters? They still back up on the Monday and just back up the truck for uh, Tali Rose in Adelaide. That's just the, the character sick of, the, for it. of the punters. Sick for it. Like the week before, 300 to 1. And you look at yesterday, there didn't, didn't, it wasn't a horror beats on favourites even yesterday. The blokes were on the coma position, the last favourite in Sydney yesterday and the last mm. favourite in Melbourne, Garvok, everyone's... But then they'll back up, they'll bow and do it again. They're just resilient, resilient bunch of punters, I tell you. And a case... Absolutely. Everyone missed September run, and she was really below par run, but you've obviously got the Group 1 William Reed Stakes night uh, next Friday night, and there was a horse that you found at really big odds, and Brooklyn Hustle. I'm not sure if she's going to that race, but... She was a real eye catcher, stuck in behind him, held up in traffic. What did you think of the race? Yeah, I mean, uh, I said that September run should be fine from those middle gates, but when those uh, inside runners took a little right-hand turn to the middle to the better part of the track, she ran out of room. Uh, yeah, Brooklyn hustle, but it is starting to become that uh, getting a bit of a hard luck story theme to its runs. It's that kind of horse, so I don't know if the valley will suit it. Mm. Um, I'll be more looking for something up on the speed in the Willie Reed. Um I wanted to see Celebrity Queen come through the race in one piece. I'm not sure if they're going to go there now. There was a few hard luck stories. Flick was another hard luck story that was getting going and ran out of room. They really, you know, when they merged, uh, the room became at a premium and it cost a few horses. Um, and, yeah, the, the toppy was good enough to get out in front and keep running. Mm, what yeah. uh, what do you think of the race, Steve? Yeah, it was interesting. Those, the first three came up that inside lane, didn't they? And they, mm. they weren't. They were the tracking along. They weren't, they weren't loafing. Like They'd gone out pretty quick. Um, but yeah, there's a few to follow, and I'll Flip would be one up in distance. Um, but I mean, it didn't have the people whack on nature strip, but um, the favourites are off the thousand metre run, Scooty. Mm. But, no. but having said that, forever, there was always caveats. But you go back and look at it, you know, and the way that race was run and everything was that lead up run, the right lead up run for Swats that and September run in hindsight when they get beat. Yeah, you know, against some tough twelve hundred metre sprinters, maybe maybe it wasn't. You know, nature strip stayed at a thousand metres in Sydney. Yep. Um, and gone terrific. Eduardo's just gone through the roof to beat it. It ran a huge figure over a thousand. But yeah, just little things. You just just looking back, why they why they think you know, maybe that run wasn't the right run mm. to go into the, a big tough new mark because it's like a thirteen hundred meter race. Exactly. You know that pressure race yep. down the straight. You know, so um, just little things maybe. You know, but um, flit flit will be one I'll be taking out up to thirteen or fourteen hundred. Mm, there's there's always something to learn in hindsight and we saw it with Luna Fox a couple of weeks ago and even the different angles and that's what we're trying to do here we're trying to look at different form angles and even a run like Brooklyn Hustle she came off that Oakley Plate 1100 metre lead up run had she got clear air it might have been a different story she might have like finished in the placings at, at really big odds so you're always challenging yourself looking at different sort of angles what the trainer's doing and different sort of platforms for horses because it all just adds up because if you keep backing the obvious you're going to run a, a long way last if, and you won't be beating your And that's her, up. though. That's her. Suck, suck. In mm. behind. Suck, suck, suck. Clear and produce, you know? Yeah. She gets clear. She's there. If she doesn't, she gets held up. That's what happens with her horses with her pattern. But couldn't take anything away from the things on the pace there. Mm. They did all the donkey work up the front and they kept kicking. It was... Um, and they're nice horses. Like Indian Pacific, he's a proper horse. Mm. I know that. And, you know, just looking back through his form over in WA, you know, he's, he's let him up there. So, anyway, I, I enjoyed stiff the race. to be two from two, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. anyway. Absolutely. All right. Enough looking in the rear view mirror, the windscreen. That's where we need to be looking. We need to be looking forward and the all-star mile. All-star mile, all-star performer, Casey McCutcheon. Case, let's uh, have a look at the market at Top Sport. And it's up on the screen now. And then, Dust, what about the market movers? Is there any money early anywhere? Yeah, so 10, Arcadia Queen, $3.50 to $3.40. Probabil, $4.20 to $4. And Russian Camelot, Eight dollars fifty to eight dollars, and we're just going to get the replay at Casey's request of last year's Cox Plate. He thinks that this is a key form reference race, so we'll just put that up on screen now, and Casey will talk through why he's chosen this little replay. Here it is now. So I suppose the exciting thing about this All Star Mile is that it's almost another Cox Plate replay. We've got all the key players, most of the key players uh, featuring over a mile. 
will we get the conditions we saw in the Cox Plate last year? And I was doing a rain dance. I'd laid Arcadia Queen for the <laughs> Cox Plate, and, and she will definitely be blunted. She's the leading contender for this All-Star Mile. She's arguably the best horse in the land. Have we seen her shoot, shoot the lights out at Group 1 level? She's won a few of them, but uh, has she really taken that mantle? Not yet. This will help on Saturday. She wants it dry. Probably wants it dry. So the reason I wanted to look at that race again, or that's probably the starting point from right. They've only had the, the single run at the Valley, a few of these key contenders. They, they went okay. What have they done since? And, uh, and how does it all line up um, for Saturday? So as I said, you'd be brave to be betting early on uh, the Saturday races with uh, rain possibly. And I looked at the rain for the weather forecast and there was just a crayon picture of a blue duck. So they're uh, either <laughs> saying there's going to be rain or, or they just wanted to see what a blue duck looked like. So I'm not too sure. We uh, can't bet early with, with uh, the prospect of that because we've got the uh, we've got the dry trackers and we've got the wet trackers. I think Murga 2 comes into it big time with a wet track. We obviously saw what Sir Dragon A can do on a wet track. Russian Camelot wants it wet. So um, you're going to have to do two sets of form punters, unfortunately, but uh, it does make an exciting contest. The draw is interesting. Most of the speed's coming from the outside. Um, so with the, uh, the Mooney Valley Mile is around the Dean Street side, and there's a good run to the first turn. There's about a 400-metre run. They've got plenty of time to sort themselves out. Um, and the other thing that's uh, in the forecast is possibly a very strong northerly, which will help the leaders, which might swing to a southerly. So they've had a beautiful each-way bet. Um, keep an eye on those sorts of things because they will uh, play a role in you know where the horses are going to settle and who's advantaged and disadvantaged. Um, there's the sneaky on pace run and shout the bar. Every time it's drawn a marble, it's run a good race or one. I think it's maybe three from three every time it's drawn a nice alley and uh, it should get you know a nice posse uh, just off the speed. I see Moody Valley are going to shout for racetrack if it gets up. Uh, free drinks. And <laughs> no, yeah, the, yeah, the, owners, the owners are shouting yep. the bar. Up. Are they? Yeah. yeah, they're going to free booze for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, good. That's a four million bucks in the pocket or something, whatever to the winner, <laughs> but should be able to afford it. Love so, that. It's a fantastic right. initiative. Maybe you should do that at uh, every meeting. Um, so they're the ones. I see Graceful Glamour coming across and setting some speed. Streets of Avalon probably comes across and joins it. Maybe still a star gets running from that outside alley. I'm not sure. They've got a choice. When you're when you're a horse with up against it on class, you're probably going to have to take it to these uh, classier runners and, uh, and see what happens. Um, I'm hopeful Arcadia Queen, uh, given she performed well on that soft track anyway last year. I just think, you know, she, she want that good track to be at her best and hopefully not too far back. Uh, gate six should be fine. A couple of pairs or two or three or four pairs back and two or three off the fence, hopefully with some cover. Probabil is the one that sort of uh, lit up the imagination. I, I thought it was maybe a rung below the Queen uh, last spring, but the way she's come out this prep has been very impressive. Um, but in saying that, on watching their last run, I, f I felt like at a, at a mile second up, the Queen would have her covered. Mm. It's an interesting, um, it's an interesting weather forecast oh. for this week. It's we've got a twenty nine degree day tomorrow That's on right. Friday, and then we've got eight to fifteen mil forecast on Saturday. Yeah. This which is could a nightmare. Be, which could be zero to fifteen mil. You know, which way that yeah, the, what can happen? We've seen that happen before, but mm. it's, we, we're probably getting some. And the rail back to true. Which it hasn't been for quite some time. Northerly wind. Uh oh. Like this could there could be severe like, bias. Well lucky we've got the as it Marty Sinan's one of the best, but it'd be interesting to what he what he does. I'm tipping he won't be putting any any water on Friday. Mm. He's lucky that the strat there is a cushiony sort of surface yeah. anyway. Um but I'm tipping, yeah. He'll and, take the risk. Yeah. And that I think the probability connections were foxing too. They don't want him to put any on. You know, mm. said, oh, if it gets too soft, we're not going to run. You know, that's a bit of foxing going on there. <laughs> you know, the, the, the old Lee Friedman, Maccabi Diva trick, you know. Um, <laughs> put water on, don't put water on. So um, I wouldn't be betting in this race till the last five minutes, personally. Yeah, I think this, this race... That, that rain's forecast mid-afternoon, mm. you know. And there's going to be a 10 degree temperature drop and all that. So, yeah. you know, I'll be waiting and seeing. I think uh, I think the market looks looks pretty spot on here, and I, I sort of like the the inside draws that late in the day for Russian Camelot and Arcadia Queen. If I had to have a bet uh, right now, I'd be probably just on a price point. I'd probably say Russian Camelot, but I can see lots of horses fanning off. It might be an advantage to be inside. There's gonna, this is going to go. Like, they're just going to go like the clappers here. The sixteen hundred, you know, I haven't got twenty like two thousand meters of a cox plate, but they're going to go as brutal as a, as a cox plate, and it'll be last horse standing. And I just feel it might be a horse like Russian Camelot or Arcadia Queen left standing. I love probably I don't think she's done anything wrong, but again, until you can see which way this track's going to play, I think it's it's 
uh, it's fool's gold trying to leap into anything early. And, um, maybe, yeah, Russian Camelot at eight dollars possibly is the value based on you know some of the historical SPs. But I think Casey and, and DK are on the money here. You're just gonna have to be on high alert, weather watch, and see what happens with that uh, that blue duck case. He's gonna want. Uh, well, he's gonna have last crack. We saw him, you know, from the outside alley go forward in the Cox Plate. The, the Russian. So O'Brien this time, I think they're gonna snag. So. I don't like that at the Valley. Um, you're going to need a lot of luck from there, and then you might be, you know, given the likes of Arcadia Queen and Probabil a start. I'm, I'm, I'm against Russian. Um, Behemoth, the other one's going to be tucked away on the rail, and at a mile, will it have to sort of be too ha- be handy from the from the gate, and also, you know, try and still get a mile? So a couple of question marks around those two from those inside gates. I'm not sure they'd love to be drawn somewhere in the middle. I reckon. Mm, and there's. There's a couple of horses that are suspect at a strong 1600, yeah, especially in the slop. So there's going to be a little bit of traffic. It's it's a fascinating race, and it's going to be high drama. And then you've got Jamie Probably Carr is. and a horse like Mr. Quickie, who has an out and out mile and has always promised so much. Case, maybe uh, we'll take the foot off the pedal and we'll go back to race four, the Randvet Able Stakes. We'll get a market up on screen now, and we'll get the market movers from you, Darcy. We'll not try and find an easy race because. That's what pro gamblers do. They don't worry about the big group one flashy uh, races. They try and pick off easy races, and you've seen DK do it all week out wide. But, Das, what's the uh, the market moves at race four at Mooney Valley? Yeah, so we have favourite, number three, Ancestry, $2.70, no change. And then number seven, Pandemic, $3.90 to $4. And number two, Age of Chivalry, $5 into $4.60. What do we think? Dollar for dollars, another player here is, uh, who's first up as well. I just sort of thought maybe Ancestry was worth another chance. Uh, it was disappointing in the Oakley Plate and knocked up on a hard track um, was the word from the jockey. And it was certainly uh, what looked like uh, happened to it there after you know jumping well, putting itself in a position. They're the things you want to do over the 1200 at Mooney Valley. So I'm inclined to give it another go, especially if uh, possibly a couple dollar for dollar might need, you know, might be a little bit conservative. Uh, rather than pushing it. Um, I thought it might get a softish go, a time of things up the front. Um, and an age of chivalry is definitely in the market and, and pandemic I think might be giving it a start as well. So I'll, I was happy enough to give Ancestry another go here, um, but it will be the last chance it should it uh, knock up again at, at this class. And we're going to skip through to Mooney Valley Race 9, the Chandler McLeod Grand Benchmark 80. We'll get the market up on screen, odds courtesy of topsport.com.au. And Das, the market movers there. Yep, so the favourite, 10, the billionaire, $4.20 into $3.90. Thoughts here, Case? Yeah, he's really, you know, I thought we might get a price to the billionaire. He's... um... Going to another level since being gelded uh, before this before this prep is the mail I've got, and I thought again it might get a little picnic up the front here. Um, I think the key uh, the key is it Cordilla who's uh, next in the market there. Das might be again giving it a bit of a start, but I am worried about it. Uh, it's been winning off slow slow tempos despite the fact that it's a, an off pacer. Uh, so. Again, I'm betting on the map here. I'm betting on the billionaire sort of skipping away and uh, and being too quick for these other horses that are maybe give it a little bit of a start and maybe aren't as sharp over the 1200. So I was hoping mm. for a bit more of a price. Maybe we see uh, we see some flux or we wait. The other thing is that uh, Ancestry wants rain, so that's that's Ancestry's on the proviso we get rain, but billionaire doesn't. So I'm having a lovely each way bet uh, on just being a wetty and a dry, but the billionaire, the billionaire will want a good track. Okay, so it's a big weather watch from the bookie down at Bo Morris, Mint Bet. Case, we're about a week away from the Money Valley Knights. You're the captain of the Victorian team. How's confidence levels and how's your preparation leading into the big night? Mate, we've got a few sessions on the track before next Friday. It's obviously the All-Star Mile. It's just the uh, precursor, the curtain raiser for the big night, the real big <laughs> night next Friday, uh, Friday next week. The William Reed, just been having a look at those sprinters and seeing who's cherry ripe. A couple of those mares coming out. Maybe the Star Realm might be going on that mares race. No, mate, our preparations are uh, ship shape and we will be ready to go, both vocally and uh, and our plan will be ready to be put in place mm. for the VIX. But- I'd be, uh, I'd be very disappointed if you guys don't uh, sledge the absolute heck out of each other. So tune in to Little Birdie Podcast on YouTube. You can join to the stream as well at Little Birdie TV. We're tweeting the updated banks. 
We, uh, we're looking for two 50K starting banks at a minimum, and these guys are just gonna go hammer and tong against each other, race to race, and it's whoever has the biggest pot. There's gonna be a prize up for grabs for the winning team, and then if you uh, choose the winning stream team, you'll also get some prizes there. We'll reveal more information about that next week. So if you wanna join us at the track, it's $150 per person. That's food and drink, and about four, four and a half hours worth of entertainment. You get to meet Casey, DK in the roving, Mike on the crowd, and and we'll have Darcy there, and it'll be great fun at the Valley. It'll be a night not to be missed. Thanks for joining us, Case, and uh, good luck at the Valley this weekend, and we'll catch you next week. Thank you, guys. Good luck on Saturday, and uh, looking forward to next week. Here it goes. The Casey. best online form guide you can find, Darcy, is... Powered by puntingform.com.au, Australia's best online form guide and database. Scoot and DK use it, and a little birdie tells me that Casey McCutcheon uses it too. That's exactly right. Casey is on board, puntingform.com.au. That is where you find the winners easiest. Up next, we're going to go to Sydney and talk all things New South Wales with John Walter. Hey, Walter. Welcome back to Bet Doctor, a behind the curtain look at how pro punters operate. I'm your host, Scoot, with DK, the punters punter, and Darcy Spinks. And it's time to talk with John Walter. How are you, Walt? Two weeks in a row, mate. You must be struggling for people. No, unchanged lineup. Lots of feedback on how sharp the show was, and plenty of love for Johnny Walter as well. But. Uh, we just had a little funny moment in the break. DK has just watched a horse's price disintegrate right before his eyes. We're going to clip oh, that one up and we'll tweet it out. But uh, I, I've just... 10 to 7, 10 to 7, the price has gone. I'm in the car. <laughs> this is the best. This is the best. <laughs> oh, oh, it is great viewing. So we'll, uh, we'll put that on our Twitter page. And, and Johnny Walter, you were active on Twitter last night. You were dragged into maths. You, uh, you love the... The, th- oh, the, thro- the throwing of the water. You join the strength. I was I, I, I was tempted to t- chime into the Bryce Sam thing. I, I wrote a few, deleted a few. I, I, yeah, that was a bit too much. But when he throws the water, like seriously, <laughs> <laughs> he throws water. He missed him too. He got poor and old how Patrick. Did he not go most across the table at him at that point, old oh, mate. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, l- last week we had Walt previewing the Todman Stakes and he identified Profiteer as a lawnmower run the start before. So let's just do some recap because next Saturday is the Golden Slipper and this is one of the biggest betting races of the year. So let's get the replay up of the Todman and we'll get Walt to talk us through the home straight. So what was what was interesting here, he looked like he sort of went a bit quick again early, started throwing his head, but you're sort of looking back at it, he didn't, and he sort of controlled him. And, and also the other important part was pre-race with this horse that he paraded with a bit of improvement. So Mick Price has done a huge job to get this horse back. He's obviously got run over a bit late here. Mm, can we watch um, that one again? He's a horse that I'd pen probably for the slipper, and he's and he looks more of a live hope now. He's got him back under control if he... If he can just shave another ten percent off his off his uh, manners and and get him right on the day. He's the sort of horse that's going to be in the right spot, and it's not a deep slipper. So, you know, whereas Arcaded, who's had every possible come from three back the fence, it needs to draw a gate to get that sort of run in the slipper. Profiteer doesn't matter where he draws; he's he's going to be in the firing line. So mm. he, he's definitely a major player. Yep, and then stay inside. It was. It was a really negative ride from James McDonald, and that's what you said on the show. Tactics were going to be everything, and they were eventually. Like he was dead as a doornail on that horse, snagged back to last, and then got strung up in in behind runners there. Well, he was a short half head from getting the run that um, Arcade had gotten. He probably looks like a genius if he gets it. So, you Animo, know, you but mean. he was obviously Animo. under under instructions to look after the horse on this day, and if he got the luck, you know, hmm. he wouldn't have got. Was, I just watched the replay a few times. He would have. He, he wouldn't have got across. He hmm. would give it a little. Squeeze forward or something. No, I think so, he did the right yeah, thing from, yeah. from all, all angles for these chances on the day and chances going forward. And I don't see how he's not, um, he's lost, how could he lose any uh, followers from, from that run? I can't I can't see why. Mm. And then uh, the top sort odds aren't quite ready there for us, but we've got Profiteer $5, Stay Inside $6.50, uh, Artorias $7.50 yeah. and Animo $8.50. Of yeah. those four chances, gun to your head, we'll go to you first, DK. Who would you be backing to win oh, the slipper? It's completely up for grabs. Um, I, I, I still think it's, I think I like the run of the third or see you there on Saturday. I think he's got a bit to give. Mm. At, at odds, he's seven his home affairs. Well, he's, he's, not, he's not, uh, not hopeless, so I'll be looking... Yeah, I'll be looking for a bit of value, and it's all going to be come down the barrier draw and things. Still, pro- property is 
just still does a bit too much wrong. But as John said, he's, he's, he improves his manners and everything. But I thought I liked um, Chris Wallace Wall's home affairs. It's going to be nice and strong at the end of the, the uh, a testing golden slipper. Mm. What about you, Walt? I'm, I'm staying side just because I think there's seven days out of the next 12 or whatever is uh, supposed to be um, rain. So I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be a wet track and, and stay inside's the one that will really uh, come into its own on a wet track. And I think the wild card is number five on the list there, which you didn't mention, probably four moves ahead is the one that I'm interested in coming into the race um, from a different set of form lines. It, it, it did a good job at its, its last start win. And, uh, and it's another one that looks like it, it handles wet with no issue. And I just don't, yeah, but profiteer, I'm a bit the same. Like I, I, $5, there's no way in the world I'll be chiming into $5 it. And, and I think Animo needs all the, all the, all the splits, all the luck in the world to, to get near the rest of them. Mm, okay. We might pick this back up after the barrier draw, but mm. this is going to be a heck of a betting race. You've got four to one or better the field and there's just angles everywhere. It's yeah, going to be an absolute yeah. cracking renewal That's of the golden grabs, slipper. Sure. slipper. Uh, let's have a look at another replay. And there's a lot of talk about the Randwick guineas and I've just got out of the cupboard with this one. We've got Moanga back in the Annabelle Nisham uh, Aqua coming across heels trying to trying to find a run in behind them. And, and then the winner, Lions Raw, in the, I think it's the white and red, charging ahead well yeah yeah well, I, I'm, I'm i think he's a suck uh i think the way he was ridden absolutely flattered moanga to the best that he possibly could be obviously the tempo was on suited him the winners had a nice run and sort of got a split on him. i'm not saying he probably he wouldn't have won if he got out an extra 50 meters earlier but he's that sort of horse that needs to be covered cover cover covered and then exposed mm. and come with a run those sort of horses do one thing in life and that's bleed you dry. And I'm not I, I like sort of heading forward. I've got no reason to say why that horse is going to run 2,400 metres at this stage, no longer. Yeah, and that's looking forward Have towards to disagree. The, the derby. Disagree. Oh, DK's in the yeah. other, other camp. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm mate, a... he had the blinkers on, mate. He's a different horse. Oh, those blinkers. <laughs> yeah, they, they blinkers hey, Tommy or the so horse? Who, who had yeah. the blinkers on? <laughs> How many starts is he had? You're calling him a suck. How many starts is he had? Mate, Four, five? I'll call him a suck off a trial if I want to. <laughs> well, I'm saying the blinkers the blinkers might have really done the trick Turn, on that turned horse. Turned him on. And um, that was an empty out for a lot of horses, and it wasn't an empty out for him. Mm. So, um, he's, uh, so he'll be ready to suck next start again. Well, it's an interesting one. I think next start, with those flashy run horses, horses like that, DK, the market will have that horse super short. And a lot of those times, he might be too exposed now to back him at the next start. Well, he's only lightly raced, so. Mm. He's only second up. Like, okay. You know, like second up, the line like yeah, that. And, then, up, and then Skylab will just camp up to him next start, <laughs> pat him on the head and say, ta-da, son. There you go. And Walt, wow, Walt, I love this. It's, uh, it's starting to get a bit narky and heated in here. And DK's Mr. Price. Walt's coming off the top turnbuckle. <laughs> this is what we like. I can't wait till we get to deeper into the carnival up at Sydney in the autumn. Let's uh, let's take the uh, take the heat out of the battle now and let's have a look at racing this week. We've got the Magic Knight Stakes. We're going to get the Top Sport market up. It's race two at Rose Hill this weekend. And Darcy, early market moves, please. Yeah, so the favourite, number three, Mallory, $2.70 to $2.60. Number two, Arcaded, $3.50 to $3.70. And Jamea, I think that's how you pronounce yep. it, $8 to $6. Walt, talk us through the Magic Knight. Looks like a cracking, uh, cracking race, this one. Oh, it's a cracking race. It's a cracking race. It's the only race I can cover for the week. It just gives me a lot of time to spend on one race. It's good. But um, I think all eyes on an arcaded here. Uh, its first two wins really dominant. Um, obviously drew that inside spot. I'm not, not sure what went wrong in the blue diamond, but if he's got this horse back on track here, it's a race that totally lacks any speed. And uh, he's drawn the right spot to sort of carve across and sit on speed in a, in a pretty weak looking magic night to me and if it's on track I don't see how they beat it mm. Mm, that Mallory mustn't be much good then because Arcaded I don't know about Arcaded hey, did you see the time well, it's the, I don't think Mallory is, is yeah. it's, it's not a horse I'm scared of in any race Okay. Mm. Uh, and what sense. about Jamea the early market move there 8 into $6 it's like fourth run, first prep. It's been solid enough, and it was probably a, a, the better of the runs on the sort of worst part of the track last time. But gets a rider upgrade, um, you could say, I guess, with with Brock Ryan breaking his leg and the senior rider and Tommy going on. 
Uh, another horse, I'm not, I think it needs everything to fall its way. I think most of the, even is it Robert Dero, they, they, all those horses had their chance last start for mine. And um, Arcade is the one that brings the, the different form line and it, uh, it, it looks stronger to me than, um, than these horses. It makes its own luck. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, we're starting to eat down the clock. We covered a lot of ground with Casey on the foot on the Mooney Valley preview, but while we might, uh, we might put you up on the blocks, you can calm down and gosh, you guys were, had a lot of love for each other up at the Little Birdie Millions, and now all of a sudden you want to square off and go toe to toe. Of all the people I, I didn't think was into suck horses, DK was the one. I've called him the most genuine person in the world, the nicest bloke everything and then he goes along and he wants to these horses that get fast tempo suck 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 come out sprint a furlong and he wants to go to bed with them at night i don't understand <laughs> oh god i wish we could put you guys head to head in a live stream it would make a very entertaining viewing we're just going to have to find a neutral surface or you know a dk specializes hope in. maidens at 20 paces <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'd make great streaming and great TV, that's for sure. All right, well, good luck on the weekend, and we'll get you back on next week as the Golden Slipper starts to heat up. And once we see that uh, all important barrier draw, it's going to be a cracker. Good luck at Kemble Grange tomorrow, and of course, Rose Hill on Saturday. He's good luck today. Good luck today, DK. <laughs> I'll need it. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> okay, up next, we've got the top sport big bets, the early bets, where the money has moved early for Rose Hill and Mooney Valley. Darcy. Yes, so Rose Hill, race seven, number 11, All Saints Eve, 2000 at $13. Rose Hill, race seven, number six, Ice Bath, 1500 at $10. Rose Hill, race eight, number one, Mr. C Wolf, $1,000 at $16. Mooney Valley race number eight, to Behemoth, $1,500 at $15. Mm, anything there, DK, that tickles your fancy? Oh, I wouldn't notice any ones, and I think it's a stretch. It might be an owner's bet or something that on Behemoth. That's the only one I could see him. It's going to be a testing mile. Mm. So I don't know about him at the testing mile, but um, there might be an owner's bet or a connections or something like that getting on early. Yeah, and I, I probably I couldn't come into Behemoth in this sort Especially of Especially an early bet. Yeah, most of them are on Sydney because mm. the smart money isn't betting early at Mooney Valley. No, not so at I'd all. So I'd say that's a connections or something bet there. I think he's drawn favourably Behemoth, but again, at 1,600 on a possible wet track, it's not no, really the setup that no, I like, no. even though he's a go-forward horse. Um, an interesting bet out of there, uh, Mr. Seawolf is probably something you know that... Him? Oh, yeah, I know the horse pretty well from the Waller Yard, and I think that, um, first up, it's uh, it's got a lot of potential here. I think it's been uh, 16 into 14, just as the show's sort of recording here, but this is a horse that can fire, and Nash Rule is absolutely on fire at the moment. So, and who, would, who would you have sided with in the Moonga debate? Oh, I thought the Moonga run was was quite good. You were uh, on it. You were invested. Well, I, and I was I was on it in the Guineas. Yeah, uh, so you know the horse. You know I the horse know the well. horse very very well. Right. Uh, I I think it's got an a, like a push button accelerator. Yeah. So I think this horse has got a lot of, lot of potential. I love the I love how it picked up after it was behind a wall of horses. Yeah. I think this horse has got X yeah, Factor. Right. Yeah. And so I'm on the right, I'm under, on the right track. Well, uh, it's I a think game of opinions, you right? cannot back it next start because everyone's seen right. it. The bookies are going to open it up yeah, half of what know. its usual price is. I'd, I'd wait and I'd let the market drift back out. You're probably going to get a better price bet, late on a horse late. like Moonga. Um, and I'm just going to... That's particularly the case with run-on jobs too. Yeah. I mean, things are going to be midfield. You do get a better price late. Mm. Um, big roomy track like back to Randwick or something yeah. like that. There's oh. gonna there's a big, big race in this horse. Mm. And I don't... Yeah, I probably don't subscribe to the fact that he's uh, a cat, but I love yeah. that... Uh, strong opinions. Though, yeah, he's got very, very strong, strong opinions. opinions. <laughs> he could be right. He could be yeah, right. That's right. That's right. We'll the, let him know if he is or he isn't. Don't worry about that. Right exactly. <laughs> we don't pull our punches here. But yeah, I, I, I thought it all come a little bit too quick for him in the guineas down here. And he might have yeah. really furnished into a nice horse. But yeah, yeah Annabelle Nisham is flying at the moment. And I think um, mm. she's definitely found the key to that horse. That is uh, the show from us. We've got In the Know with Snow. He's going to tweet out a tip. So make sure you follow at Bet Doctor TV for Snowy's Mail. He's got something on Saturday for us. DK's out wide stuff. He's got one at uh, Packenham tonight. Packenham tonight. Packenham tonight. So make sure you Hamilton tune Hamilton into tomorrow, that. And then we'll do the form for the weekend this afternoon. Mm, it's going to be action packed. We'll be picking the eyes out of it. That's what we'll be doing. Money Valley Nights, only a week away. Darcy is pumped up. She's going to have a rest. She's been busy yes, this week. Up, Social Darcy. life. Just absolutely. Um, here's a couple of days in the paddock. <laughs> <laughs> yes, paddock. I need to go back to the farm. No, no socialising this weekend. 
Good. Just preparing Good. for next Friday. Friday. <laughs> exactly, in cotton wool. All right. Yes. Follow at Bet Doctor TV on Twitter, Bet Doctor in the Apple Store, uh, in Spotify. We're on SoundCloud. We're ve- we're everywhere. Little Birdie Podcast on YouTube. Check us out if you want to go through all the races that we show replays of. See you next week. Bet, bet, bet.